By now, if you have clicked on this video, you've already heard about Alex Jones. Infowars being removed from social media platforms. Aside from that specific instance, for some time now, it's been clear that YouTube has been demonetizing any media that could be considered controversial. In other words, news. Many conservatives, and even some leftists, have noted how there seems to be a left-wing bias leading to YouTube algorithms, demonetizing conservative and libertarian voices more so than left-wing voices. Although at first, and still, even left-wing voices that talk about controversial topics have been and will be demonetized as well. Unless you're the Young Turks or a late night comedy show on cable TV trying to upload your stuff to YouTube. At first, I would have agreed that this affected both the left and the right, and I somewhat still do. Any power propped up can and will be abused by people. Power corrupts. Of course, the abuse of this power has been seized by those with left-wing political leanings. That's not to say that conservatives don't have institutions in which they control. YouTube updated its policy regarding firearm videos, which is more often than not going to hurt conservatives. Outside of firearms, we've seen Owen Benjamin, Gavin McInnes, and Stefan Molyneux targeted by big social media platforms. That seems like a problem, and in fact, it is a problem, but what do we do about it? Some conservatives have supported breaking up Google via government force, thus treating it as a monopoly. Other conservatives have suggested creating alternatives to YouTube or moving to a YouTube competitor such as Dailymotion, Minds, Vimeo, and so on. Some conservatives have started up subscription networks, one of these being CRTV. Others have utilized Patreon, so fans of YouTube channels can directly donate to their favorite content creators. Here's where I stand on it. The government has no right to step in. Understand the precedent that this would set if we allow the government to intervene in a cultural issue. You then open the door for your enemies to utilize that centralized control you gave to someone in order to benefit you. What benefits you now can be used against you. When we cycle through another administration, some politicians will die, will serve their term limit, will retire, will be bribed, or will get voted out. Donald Trump won't be in office forever. Once Donald Trump is gone, that power you ceded will be available to someone who hates your guts and your ideology. There is a slippery slope. In addition to that, if you believe in a free market, but you advocate the government stepping in, I'm sorry, this is the hill I will die on, you don't truly believe in the free market. Imagine you take a risk and invest in a platform. You spent the labor to start a business and you make a profit off of this because you have successfully built something. Then following that, people are threatening to bring the state in to coerce you into running your own platform the way that they want it ran. These aren't your platforms. You are not entitled to a space on platforms created by someone else. Now I will agree that these platforms are beneficial and large, but they are not required. These social media platforms, while helpful, will not make or break you. They can assist, but these aren't necessities. These are inventions created by someone else. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are not the same thing as electricity or water. You have no right to Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. You did not make them. You don't own the rights to Facebook. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube owe you nothing. These platforms are not your property. You can argue that someone building a business on social media is at risk of losing everything because of pesky hate speech violations being enforced by someone with a left-wing persuasion. However, let's be clear about this. You didn't have to build a business on social media, nor are you entitled to social media keeping your business accessible on their platform. If I rent out a space in public and buy a microphone and set up a podium and give a speech or talk about politics, I'm not required to share that microphone or space with anyone. Or if I own a venue, I am not required to rent it out for political reasons or other gatherings that I personally disagree with. We also need to be clear about what freedom of speech is. Freedom of speech isn't the right to have a platform to speak. Freedom of speech is the right to speak. With that being said, I will extend an olive branch. I understand the argument about the culture of free speech, and I agree. 
However, I think that is where the debate should stay. This should be a debate about cultural ethics and personal morals. This is a cultural issue, not a government regulatory issue. Understand that if the government has the ability to give you a platform or force you to give someone a platform to speak, then the government has the power to strip you from a platform as well. A blade swinging one way can swing back the other way and cut you as well. I don't view the current trend of social media as a detrimental blow to conservatives. I see the actions of these companies as an act of desperation because they are losing and they know they are staring down the barrel of a gun. Moreover, moreover these actions do more to rally free speech advocates and in the end will only harm the censors more than the censored. Let me be clear about how I feel. I don't think conservatives, libertarians, or anybody for that matter should be banned from social media for having a different opinion. Culturally, we should defend the ability for everyone to speak. This is a battle that can be won without the force of government seizing someone else's business or platform. Alex Jones should be accepted on the platform. Let his bad ideas have light. Now, let me just say, what really bothers me is the knee-jerk reaction from my libertarian friends, some of them, that Whenever something like this happens, they instinctually argue that private companies have a right to do what they want. And I agree. I believe in the free market. But just because someone or something has a right to do something, that does not mean you can't have a stance on it. You have the right to have opinions. People have a right to be promiscuous and have sex with whoever they want. But I don't think you should. You have a right to be as fat as you want. However, I don't think you should be as fat as you want. I think we should be persistent and speak out against cultural and media censorship. We don't need the government to intervene. We have better ideas. We have the moral high ground. We will win.